Welcome everyone to DreamHack Dallas 119. My name is Tyler2022, and this will be Melgar Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. And with me on the couch, Starwin. Hi, I'm Starwin. How's it going? Yeah, I think it's like your third couch about. Third couch, I know, second or third couch. I got like three more tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so this guy has been just going at it, so. <laughs> All right, let's get started here. So we're going to be doing on um, New Game Plus, which is said we have to beat the game once. Reason for this is that we actually get to skip a little two-minute tutorial, and there's also some benefits and some randomness with that. And as they said before, I will be playing this on European Extreme, but a slight change, or well, not a change, but for Big Boss, um, you like, actually don't even need to have the, the um, Game Over Tip Discover turned on, so I'll be doing Knock Game Over, which is a bit faster, but I can still get big boss rank. Um, so yeah, um, ready? Oh, I'm ready. Dream Mac Dallas, are you ready? Yeah. Woo! It's time for Metal Gear. Metal, Metal Gear. Gear. All right. Great Fox. <laughs> Start the timer in three, two, one. Zoom. A zoom. All right, so this is the first part of Milgar Solid 2. This is the tanker section. We're playing a solid snake for about the first nine minutes or so. This uh, section is pretty straightforward, but it is quite reset heavy. There's a lot of difficult sections in this, especially towards the end. And the main problem with this difficulty is that you die fairly quickly. From the normal guns from the enemies, you die from, from full right, to nothing in three shots. And most of the bosses one-shot you. For the first one, it's not going to matter because she will one-shot us, so I'm going to be taking slight advantage of that by doing some um, damage canceling and some damage boosting for some very small time saves. And unfortunately, the right side is locked. We have to go all the way around here to the left and go the long way around. Pass by that guy. And once we get to Olga, then things will start getting spicy, but for now, there's not going to be too much going on. Everyone knows how Metal Gear works. It's all about not letting that happen. Yeah. He's going to see us, but he's going to go back to sleep. And they're gonna be like, what's going on? No. And we're just gonna get on out of there because back in 2001, you could just leave a room and everything would be all right. Everything that just happened didn't actually happen. So a recurring theme is gonna be two trunks of the guards and then just kind of running away at this point and, and doing a small little cancel there for the cutscene. Pull that guy up just that way we don't bump into him. And there's gonna be a uh, camera which for whatever reason, for this difficulty, it's actually much easier because it moves. So I can actually just walk right underneath it and I'm fine. Now this room is a little tricky because I want to try and do a um, distraction shot, but if I actually hit the guard, then I'll take some damage. Let's see if I get it here. I did not. So I will take some damage, but it's all right. Not a big deal. Olga. Yeah, because Olga does kill you in one hit, so yeah. it doesn't really matter at this so point. So we're wanting uh, Olga to call the spot go on the left, right? That's, yes. Yeah, that's so like the this optimal. is a coin flip. She can either start going to the left or she can walk in front of us. If she goes to the left, we can actually loop her to where she doesn't even talk. But if she walks in front of us, then we have to take two headshots and then she has to talk for a little bit and then two more headshots and then she's done. Yeah, this can be a little lengthy of a boss fight if you do not get good RNG and have, you know, good shots. Let's see. And she walks in front. So we're going to get the slow Olga. There's a nice little visual cue right here on the metal. For to stop shooting, adjust a little bit to the right, and another headshot, and then she's gonna start talking for a little bit, and then two more headshots, and then it'll be done. But past that point, she becomes very random. So you want to try and get like, her as fast as possible. Hopefully, she goes up to the box. She does. Nice. And that's Olga. Yep, not a bad fight. So that's first boss of the game. Now, because we defeated her, we actually get to steal her uh, gun which is actually needed to actually go down further into the ship and go past the engine room, so. But the second gun will be a lethal weapon and it'll be loud and we'll have a flashlight, so. We won't be using it too much, we'll be using it a little bit though. Just gonna transition back on over here. Another thing that I have um, forgot to mention is that for the menus, I am using previous. And because of this, I can have um, two of my weapons at the ready pretty much, and um, this works great for like quick reloading and just for like minimizing menus. Now right here, there's gonna be a uh, guard stationed here, but luckily there's a nice little easy thing that can do, just shoot the ceiling, walk right underneath. See, he doesn't want to shoot, he just wants to call for backup. Like, he's, what a yeah. silly man. And yet again, another 
Um, one right here. He's actually gonna call back. Up, and then we're just gonna run right into him. And then like just. Why? Come on now. Like, just shoot the guy. All right, here. I'm gonna try to get a quick headshot. All right, that Ooh. was. Yeah. Very precise, <laughs> and yeah, that guy is not gonna be able to find us. We're already gone. <laughs> I'm gonna use the camera here, and that's gonna be important for the very end for a very special glitch. And that's the best time to menu for it. Now, the engine room is quite difficult. A lot of stuff going on, and if I do it fast enough, I actually take less damage, so being fast here has great reward. Nice. Okay, so I should be on the fastest route, and you can tell by this guy's flashlight walking up. If you see the flashlight, then you have a chance for the fastest route. And the guy up top did not see us, so we'll be taking less damage here, which is great because we're going to have one more fight coming up, which we pretty much tank one hit automatically. Ooh. Kind of just trank him once, sneak behind him. Doing this skips a little cutscene here because he's going to try calling for backup. But... Whoop. Three sensors, and we're off. I don't know how many times I used to die at that part when I was playing this casually back in the day. Yeah, that room is very tricky. Mm -hmm. Now we just have a straight hallway up ahead, and it's going to be gonna two guards to deal with. We're going to have a hallway fight in a little bit, boys. Oh, yeah, hallway fight. It's going to be crazy. I'm going to try and place a shot just right to where I can hold up the guy. If I place right enough, I can hold him up here. And he'll just going to be knocked out right there. Five punches, and then I can slip on by this guy. This guy's gonna be going to sleep because he's really bad at his job. <laughs> now, for marathon safety, I will be picking up the um, small M9 pack over here, and it's a little bit out of the way, but it's just right here, so not that big of a deal. Nothing wrong with safety. Yep. Nope. Starting this fight with USP because we actually need to shoot the first guard to actually line him up for the first shot, and there's gonna be eight guards and then a wave of three, so there's gonna be 11 guards in total. Unfortunately, yeah. one of them is hiding. So. Two more. One more. All right. Nice. Last three are coming up here. Just going to trank them. Let them walk on by here. Let them walk a little bit further so that way all three of them come up. Because if I were to actually just do it right close up, then they'd be coming up one at a time. So now the camera will be coming into full effect here with the USP. We're actually going to be skipping a um, ladder section where we have to actually climb down two ladders. So for whatever reason for this game, um, whenever you go to a ladder and you have the uh, camera open at the same time, the game doesn't know what to do, and you can do a series of inputs and just kind of just drop down at the bottom. A little punch buffer for that. Oh, oh no. Um, Did you go in the, are you in the wall? Yes, I am in the wall. I'm trying to see if I can somehow save this. Oh. All right, we did save it. Okay, I've never seen that happen before. Yeah, but we will have to take this room a bit slower, so I messed up a little bit, and I was supposed to just drop straight down, but because of this, I have to just do it the long way. So uh, I'm assuming since it messed up, it's going to mess with the positioning of um, like, the guards not, and stuff? Not really. No? I just get okay. to my fast strat, so I'm going to have to just okay. walk around and just check this guy for safety. All right. And for this one, a little bit of a tricky movement. You have to be kind of careful. I'm going to change the projector to the other side here. Hey, we look this way now. Hey. hey. Oh. Oh. And then one more. Oh. All right. And now the whole point of this entire mission is to take pictures of the new Metal Gear that the Marines have. We need four pictures, which three of them are going to be pretty normal. One of them is going to be kind of deceiving just because the game has weird hitboxes. Yeah. So we need one on the front left, the front with the Marine commander. And then we need the uh, Marines lettering, which for whatever reason, this counts. That counts right there, yeah. It's... And then the front right. And that is the tanker section, so. It's a good tanker. Yeah. Not bad. Nope. I'll kind of confirm that uh, we're going to have all four photos, and then we're going to go on to the plant section, which is the main entree. It's like the appetizer. The uh, tanker section is also probably one of the more popular sections to do as a 
individual level. Oh yes, for sure, because it's so essential to the speed run. Yeah. And it's a very popular level because that's Solid Snake, of course. And, yeah. and kind of spoiler warning, next section we're not going to be playing Solid Snake at all. So we'll be playing Raiden, who is much Who's better that? for uh, speed running because he has a very fast cartwheel. See Metal Gear's head, I'm going to start mashing start and not saving. And here we go to the plant section. This will be the bulk of the rest of the game. This is mm -hmm. the main area of the game. Now, you can do this in like two separate sections. So the beginning is meant to be kind of like a tutorial almost. So there'll be a lot of like rehashing and a lot of codec calls, cutscenes and stuff. More stopping than there was in the tanker. The first things first. Um, we're going to try to go through this room a little bit more interestingly than you may have seen before. So similar to the ladder glitch, we're going to equip the scope, go over here, go into the pool, and suddenly we are swimming in the air. Don't ask me why. I take the code call. He's like, hey, you're swimming? All right, cool. Now All right. I'm just going to just kind of do the geometry to just swim up. <laughs> and there would normally be a little uh, codec in a cutscene here, and we're just going to go right through that door, and that guy's just chilling out. And on to the next room. What would you do if you saw that in real life? I don't even know. <laughs> it's like... just crazy. Okay, so there are three guards knocked out by a mysterious figure. We don't know who that is yet. And we have to interact um, right here with us. No, this is going to be the only time. And this is essentially just to change your like options and like turn on the um, radar, which we don't really need to do. So this is going to be the only time that we're actually going to be going to it. And in the PS2 version, they actually like had like blood type and like a bunch of other like information. But for the HD, they just said nah, just only the name, date, and then country. And also, that is Colonel from the first game. If anyone was a fan of the first game, that is the same Colonel. And then we have a uh, female analyst, Rose, which is um, Raiden's girlfriend. There's gonna be three guards here. We have to go over to this guy right here, sleeping. Once he wakes up, we're gonna choke him and do a uh, groin punch, knock him back out, and then do a little ring around for the other guards to see us. Gonna hide over here, and then once the guard on the left starts coming up, then we're just gonna knock on the wall and make our way out. Nice. It's pretty simple. Wait for the elevator to come down. This is very similar to uh, Metal Gear Solid 1's opening. Low -low. Yes, there getting is a past, lot of Metal Gear Solid 1 references yeah, for sure. Get, yes. getting, getting past the guard, waiting for an elevator, and then, of course, right here. Yeah, there's a lot of like linear sections and kind of like narrow hallways and like stuff like that in, in like this version or sorry this uh section of the game so it's it's a lot of like rehashing towards mgs1 and like kind of referencing that especially with uh, strut b may look a little bit familiar all right little birds here it's gonna scoot on by now the main objective here is to save the president because he has been kidnapped and we're trying to find him we have to go to strut b because that's where um he was last seen so that's gonna be just a recurring thing trying to find the president and this entire place is meant for a um, cleanup facility for the tanker because right after we um, took those pictures, uh, the uh, tanker got um, hijacked and pretty much just sunk. So this entire place is set two years afterwards and it's just trying to clean up yeah. the mess. Right here, this is the um, connecting bridge. This is going to be trying mm -hmm. to connect all of the struts together and there's going to be guards posted on most of these. This is like your first real test and tells you to like go like go to like hanging mode, but just a little bit faster. Just gonna roll over these noisy tiles here. Knock over this guy. And be on our way. And this room is referencing the Melga Solid 1 room right before the Great Fox fight with all the blood on the wall that you'll be seeing later on. You may not be able to see it in the cutscenes. I may match it too fast. You won't, sorry. <laughs> Stop being good at matching. Sorry. All right, so now we met Iroquois Pliskin, who is totally not Solid Snake. It's Pliskin. Yeah, it's Pliskin. He told you his name. Yeah, I believe him. It's David Hater. <laughs> and he gave us uh, the um, SOCOM, so that's our first gun that we have now, because he didn't give us any guns. Not going to save, because you don't need to do that. And there's going to be an altercation out here with Fortune, Vamp, and the Navy Steel Soldiers, and they have the President going into the Shell One Corps. Now we're just going to report that back to Colonel. The faction known as Dead Cell. Yes. 
We're almost to the, like, to the main part of the plant. Those trap grenades will be picked up way later because they do mess with my menus, but we won't be needing chaps because chaps are very strong in this game. Yes. And the, yeah. Yeah, so the chaps are just really good. And you'll see that later on in, like, strut F that the chap is just broken. So right here we're going to be meeting um, Peter Stillman. He is a bomb disposal expert because one of the decimal members set bombs on each of the struts, which is not good, obviously. So we are now tasked with defusing all of them. And some of them have multiples. I think the most is three with, with um, strut D. So this is a lot of bombs to uh, defuse in. Does the amount of bombs change on difficulty? No, but for New Game Plus and New Game Plus 2, strut D's layout changes a little bit. Okay. And it's slightly faster on a New Game Plus by like two seconds, which is what I'm playing as. Also on um, New Game Plus 2, you actually get cool sunglasses for uh, both Snake <laughs> and Raiden, so we don't have sunglasses, <laughs> unfortunately. All right, so we have the uh, coolant spray and sensor A, which will show us a general area of the bomb. Heading back this way. Put the SOCOM and the coolant. Fire the gun so he doesn't see us. And just leave the room. So now we're going to be disarming a bunch of bombs using a, it's like a freezing spray. Yeah, the coolant spray. Yeah. Which is very helpful because it forces you into first person view, which we can kind of abuse that later on. There is one one room though that's got a lot of high high level movement in it without getting caught. Yeah, strut D is gonna yeah, be a, strut D a, is, a doozy. Is, is a joy. Yeah, and that room was already hard on New Game Plus 2, and whenever I moved to New Game Plus, it was even harder and it's like even more precise, but the room is a lot of fun. See, I see all the blood there is referencing to Mega Solid 1. Yeah. Back on the AB bridge going this way. Also, I should mention that this guy will not count as a kill because this will be an accident, quote unquote. No, no, don't do it. Bye, see you later. <laughs> that guy's going to see us. We're just going to probe once he sees us. We'll be fine. I don't know, man. You cartwheeled that man to his death. I think that's He's taking a bath. It's fine. He'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's just falling in water. It's not a big deal. Yeah, from like 70 feet. It's fine. Just swim. <laughs> just swim. And on the roof, we have one bomb here. And there is one guard to deal with. And I'm going to try to get through this as fast as possible by actually holding him up and then rolling into him. Three. Uh, maybe. Yep, made it. Nice. The enemy is attacking. Alert. No. No alert here. No alert. Now this one's going to be a little tricky. I'm going to have to hold up this guy. Huh. Groin punch. Pump the punch his leg real quick. Yeah. Go to sleep. And with the coolant, we can actually go in first person view and then cancel the actual animation of, of rising up. So it's oh, that's cool. coolant rise. Okay. Also, this is not intended, but this was found by Stealth Edge a couple years back. So makes that a whole lot easier. Gotta love hitboxes. Mm-hmm. It extends quite far out, which is very strange. I think it had, I mean, like the last one that you just did, it was like behind a fence and it looked pretty far out, so. Yeah, like, this has, has like quite range. Yeah, makes sense why that would work. All right, here, gonna get a little sneak peek of the chapter in action. This one is gonna be as fast, but the next room is gonna be a lifesaver. It's gonna make things a whole lot easier. Now, we will probably take damage. There's a small chance that I don't take damage, but it's fairly rare. During my GDQ run and once during practice, I did not take damage, but you normally take damage right here from this guy because once you get in the room, I'm going to just spam square, and he did hit us, which is fine. It's to be expected. So that's the M9, similar to the one that we had at the tanker. I'm just going to drop straight down and um, use the bomb in between this little crack here. It doesn't even look like you're hitting. <laughs> Everyone is just going crazy because there's a chaff grenade going off, so everyone's trying to call for backup, and it's just madness. So now we're going to call it a uh, caution, which is actually going to skip a mini cutscene for, for the EF connecting bridge. But because of that, I have to kind of make an awkward movement. And I'm also going to be picking up a uh, claymore here, which is a bit risky, but let's have some fun. For, for, for reference, uh, for people that don't know what chaff grenades do, they actually are disabling the electronics around the area. So cameras, ciphers. So, you know, you can actually walk past them without a triggering an alert. Yes. We have a $7.77 uh, donation from Chris Cool. I uh, didn't say anything else, but thank you. Thanks for the awesome hey, number. Donation. Seven, seven, seven. So with the caution, this room is going to be a bit trickier. It's going to be actually a guard in place here. And he'll be gone by the time that we actually come back to the room, but 
We have to shake one guy early on because he's going to be nosing the guard and he's going to be in the way for the stairs, which is going to make the exit a bit um, worse. And it's going to pretty much make the timing really tight. That's what that guy gets for stretching, taking a break on the job. Yeah. Take a nap now. And now this one coming up is kind of on a timer, so it doesn't really matter as long as we get here in a timely fashion. And we did pick up the uh, car box to be very useful later on, and especially going uh, for the next two rooms, the next three rooms will be used, so we've seen the box quite often. They, so want, now, they, they want you to use the box, like, casually to, like, tell, like, as a mode of transportation to yes. other areas, but we don't do that. No, but um, the box is used fairly fairly often you're on the run. Yeah, it's, it's a very important item, like, for other reasons, too. Yes, and we'll see that later on. Okay, so now this is the Harrier, which will be a boss later on. But there's a bomb right underneath it, so cartwheeling our way there. I also should mention that cartwheeling is a faster way of moving than just actually running, so this is preferred. <laughs> Poor guy. Poor guy, he was in the way. I was too fast, so I had you to shot him, him and knocked him out with the cartwheel. He's fine, he's just sleeping. All have right. You, have you ever been cartwheeled in the face? You're no, I don't think I want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're going to be getting a mandatory call from Rose, which she's going to be talking about some day called April 30th or whatever. And, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Day that we met. Yeah. So this guy's awake now. You know, trank him. Oh, he's not. <laughs> then quickly hold up this guy. Immediately go in the box. Come back out. So I see there. Whenever they see us and we go to the box, they actually run away from us, which is a lot better because then they won't shoot us and they take longer to actually call in for the radio for backup. And now for probably the hardest bomb disposal strut in the game right here. There's a lot going on, so I'll yes. let it speak for itself. Yes. Us, it's fine. That's why I took a bit longer to get up. But so yeah. So there's a lot going on there. Using the box. Backup will come, but we will be fine. Yep. That's why I wanted to just take it safe and not get shot by him because that happened. And that is pretty much the bulk end of of uh, bomb disposal. There's a little bit more to go, but that's pretty much the bulk end of it. So um, I noticed that when you were spraying the first bomb. You actually hit an enemy with it. So does that, that kind of like yeah, stun yeah, them? them? Correct. So that's very useful. And they're coming in from the right hand side, so we don't even need to worry about them. And we're out. See, so everybody's going to be a little camera here, but we're just going to walk right underneath it. And there will be one guard on the bridge. We'll be using the box again to just get by him. We. box is strong. It is very strong. It's, it's so really good strong. this game. This game and MGS3, the box is yeah. just super useful. Now you have to grab sensor B because there is a special bomb that cannot be detected by the regular sensor, so we actually need to grab it. We won't be using it, but it seems to be with us whenever we actually go to the final destination. Women's bathroom right here going to be defusing the last bomb, and there's two more left, actually. In <laughs> the bedroom. Women's bath. In the bedroom. Then coming up, going to be switching to the SOCOM and actually need to have no bullets because that'd be important for the fortune fight. It's going to be the first real glitch of uh, Plant Chapter, which is essentially just making us invincible to most things. But it won't, but we were pretty much uh, using it during this fight and then during the Harrier fight. Now finally grabbing these chaff grenades here. Very important later on. Now we have to backtrack from strut B all the way to the Charlie docks where we started. Pin this guy in the back and just scoot on by. He didn't know what happened. And he's about to fall asleep in three, two. Oh, <laughs> he actually did. Yeah. Right here, it's a bit easier because we have the um, M9, so there's a bit more safety, but same guys before, he's just gonna be. He falling. just he's got here. back up. He's having a real bad day. He needs to stop standing in the same spot. He sure does. It's his fault. All right. 
thing left now is to go to the docks and take the elevator down and defuse the last bomb. Last bomb. Surprised that I have not died yet, because at the tanker I was pretty sure I was gonna die, but I somehow just got back on the ladder. That was miraculous, and also this is going really well. My mistake is this where you have to deal with fortune. Yes. Okay, I just I couldn't remember if that was happening. Yeah. This part, this part's really cool. Yes. And Pierce, someone just died. Unfortunately, rest in peace. R.I.P. Yeah, Fat Man got him. But don't worry, we will avenge him later on. Go all the way back here, and funny enough, for European Extreme, it's actually in a much easier place than it is for normal. For normal, it's like under the submarine, but for European Extreme, right here. It's just a like bone. <laughs> There's like, you know what? You've been having a hard time here, just have it right here. It's like one of the couple instances where like European Extreme is actually easier. It's that and then the tanker section, like a couple other things. But for the most part, European Extreme will be much harder. And one more Kodak call, and then we're going to be starting the fortune fight here. The main thing is that she needs to uh, destroy the uh, forklift right here as soon as the fight starts. That's the most important because that starts the actual timer for the fight. I learned that recently from some people in the community. So this is Fortune. She has a rail gun. It hurts. But not that much. Yeah. <laughs> A little late on my pop up there, so you kind of want to do the pop out as the bullet's about to hit you. So you want to be in mid animation. You don't want to be doing it too late or like too early because then you could get hits. I believe I can tank one hit and then I'll be in bleeding. Maybe, but I mean, this is why we do this just for safety reasons because this fight is essentially a timer. You're just kind of waiting around. Fortune is just so lucky that she cannot be shot. And she can't shoot us either. Yep. Using your awesome dance moves. Yep. Kind of shimmying across here. And there's going to be two ammo boxes that we're going to want to pick up to make the uh, Fat Man fight later on a lot easier the more ammo that we have. All right. One of the pull-in sprays, that way we have the uh, SOCOM um, point where we leave the fight here. And that is Fortune. I'm going to be pulled up on the elevator and on our way out. So now we have to go all the way to the Strucky heliport to fight Fat Man. And it's very important that we do not die here, because if we die, we go all the way back here. Yeah. There's a couple of tricky areas. Strut F mainly is probably the trickiest area. There's some Claymore Mines here, so I'm just using the box to kind of help me, because they can go off, but it won't damage me if I have the box on. See if I can get this. I did. Nice. Open the door for me, thanks. <laughs> and for whatever reason, the uh, cipher here is just gone, so it makes things a lot easier here, just car wheeling down this long straightaway. Now, going through traffic is going to be a bit uh, hard because we have to run up to a guard and then trank him twice. Again, using the box here. Using that quick reload by having that on. Now he did see us, so we have to actually just do this. And we probably have to go back to the box again. Yep. Now because we actually got the uh, Claymore early, this is gonna make the uh, pathway here much easier. I should kind of just walk straight through here. Right. Fortunately, I have to for this camera. And, all right. Now I have to do one more distraction shot here for the parcel room. And if I place it too early, then the guys behind will hear. If I place it too late, then he's going to shoot us. So we have to be a little bit careful. Ooh. And we're good. Go to the Coen Spray for the fight, because the fight will involve us uh, defusing at least two bombs. This is a really fun fight. It is. But if it gets out of hand, he can place about five, and he gives you, like, 40 seconds. Yeah. So it's, like, near impossible. So we got to fight this guy while defusing bombs. Yeah, the like, main key point is that we do not let him place bombs and try to stay on top of them as much as we can. The long distance spray, go. All right, here comes Fat Man. Probably one of my favorite bosses in the game, just like by design. Oh yeah, this this dude's on rollerblades or roller skates. Yeah, he is quite thing. fast He's for very, size. Very quick. And in a full bomb, so he is quite quick. Oh, 
Also, the yell dead cell theme is the best in the game. So good. Yeah. Use that max range of the spray here. Pick up some M9 bullets. Turn him into pinhead. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Six shots take him down and need to try and shoot him twice. Ooh, that was kind of weird shape thing he did there. And his movements are random, so it's not guaranteed where he's actually going to skate to. Uh, Man, Fat Man needs uh, to be on Yuri on ice. Yeah. And there's Fat Man. Nice. Good fight. Good fight. Very good fight. <gasps> All one accord plan. But there's one more bomb. One we, more. We have to go find it. Yeah, it's very close by, though. Oh. It's actually on top, <laughs> underneath the uh, yep. Fat Man himself. And he's knocked out, even though we were used to tranquilizer darts, which is interesting. Yeah. He should be asleep, but oh well. So now we got the last bomb. Now we need to find the president, which right on cue, we're going to be running into a mysterious ninja who will be handing us a uh, uniform to actually get into the shell one for where we last saw the president. Whoops. Now, this disguise isn't complete, and the only thing that we need is the same gun, which so happens to be in the sort of warehouse at the bottom. And the actual uniform will be pretty useful later on, because while it doesn't do anything, well, it's not supposed to do anything past this section here, the like enemies won't see you as as a far away, or as like close, I guess. Am I? Am I yeah, yeah okay. I, I, I get what you mean. OK, I'm just trying to English, and I'm not that great at it, but anyway. Well, we were. We, we should have played on Japanese. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. My man. My man. Tell us a bunch of stuff that we've been lied to and that uh, this whole entire uh, facility has actually meant for Metal Gear, which was not told to us. And so now we're seeing some holes in the Colonel's story and getting a little more suspicious. It's right here. So what I essentially did was um, go to the box, to the VDU, and then I have the SOCOM and the M9, which I'll be using the SOCOM for the F Ridge to take out a Cypher, and then the M9 will be used in the Strut F. Go to the box real quick. Shots to Zone of the Enders. Yeah, Zone of the Enders. I think that's the only like game box that they have. I think the rest of them are like mm -hmm. generic brands, yeah. unfortunately. But yeah. No one's ever played Zone of the Enders. <laughs> it's worth. <laughs> so is this game, hundred percent. Play Metal Gear Solid. Fantastic series. Uh, this isn't good. Oof. Mm. All right, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're good. All right. Oh. It was nobody. Uh, oh, no. That's unfortunate. A little slow there. So first, uh, I'll uh, continue. That's the fast way to go about that. Unfortunately, it was a little slow on taking out that cipher. Round two. Try not to mess that up. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> Hitboxes, my boot, my dude. It's supposed to be actually doing D-pad, and that's supposed to like prevent that. I must have not done it early enough, so. Okay. It's just iron through the section third time's the charm. Raiden. Luckily, the continues are pretty fast. It's not anything too major. Yeah, this is. It's quite nice. There we go. All right. All right, there we go. Much. Oh, okay. We in there. We in there. That is the worst room in the game. I have died many a times there. I'm gonna do a little, small little punch buffer here. Do one car down the stairs. Two is possible, but get a little dicey. Shoot the wall. That guy's gonna be staring at the wall for a little bit. I love the setups for this. It's, it's yeah. really really cool. Go to the AK and nothing. This will be doing nothing here later on. Dealing with this bridge again, Bill, it'll be much easier. We'll have to yeah. deal with a lot of stuff we're gonna go, before. Yeah, if we're going to go to the left, we're going to go to the other part of the building. Yeah, these uh, panels on the floor will start falling off. 
and it'll be important leaving this uh, place on where they fall because that will be in effect at the end where we have to go back here for the last act of the game. Yeah, usually you're going to be gripping across, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. If, like, on a casual perspective, that's yes. what, what you would probably do. Or you'd like shimmy across yeah. against the wall, but yeah. So we're disguised as the enemy, and as long as we don't cartwheel in front of them, they won't really suspect us or like, do anything crazy, so... So when you actually find um, Richard Ames, and he has a uh, pacemaker, and we need the uh, directional microphone, although the guy has a mullet, and he's the only one in there with a mullet, so they could have just told us he has a mullet, and we wouldn't have to even do all this, but... Is he really the only one in there? I'm the pretty mullet? sure he's the only really? one with a mullet, so, like, he's very, like, right in your face, like, oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Shout out to Police Knots. Oh, yeah, Police Knots. A lot of uh, Konami. Yeah. Shout out to here. And I think in that room further on, they actually have Ghost Babble in there as they well. Do. Yeah, Ooh, they do. Yeah, Ghost Babble poster. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Yawning. Running Man, that's a reference to Metal Gear 2. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, fun fact, that is Hideo Kojima's favorite boss. It is. That is. I think second is Vulcan Raven, right? Yes. Yes, okay. Like, if you guys never played Metal Gear 2, it's, good a, game. it's really, really good. Not Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear 2. So right here can be knocking on the wall. Do three punches. He's gonna run behind us here. We need this guy's face. He's gonna <laughs> instantly put him on a retinal scanner. You are cleared to enter. I also like how he just immediately is knocked out. Like yep. you just grabbed him. Did and nothing. Like, oh. like, All right, I'm done. I quit for today. So because I'm on New Game Plus, this will be randomized. So He's not guaranteed to be in a good spot, and he can actually be in a pretty bad spot, but luckily, there was a backup discovered recently that fixes that. Um, I think I saw him on the top left. Yeah, he's in the top left, so I can show off this little glitch here. Try to get as far away from him as I can. Your aims, aren't you? So they actually see me doing that, and because I go into first person and then go to the D mic, for whatever reason, it lets me do it. So that's, that's just crazy. the safest way to actually just talk to Ames. And if you're too close to him, then you will knock him out and you'll have to wait an extra like five seconds or so. King. Nice little safety strat there, because otherwise I have to wait for a certain pattern of them moving around and it can be very tricky. But with that, I can just do a, uh, a um, punch punch kick and then just immediately just talk to him. And also going to be walking up to us and we have 10 seconds to press R2. How long? 10 seconds. So you could just sit there if you yeah. want? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and for the U.S. version of uh, Sons of Liberty, I think you actually have to wait. Really? Okay. The entire time, yeah. Huh. Yeah, you have to wait, so. A bit obnoxious. Nobody, it's a box. I'll just see you later, nerd. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Oh, I thought oh, I what? got him. Okay, I have to take a continue here, unfortunately. I thought I hit him. I guess not. It looked like you hit him, honestly. Yeah. I must have just missed him or got him in the air or something. That's unfortunate. So now there won't be a, a, a caution leaving this area, which changes things up a little bit. So, I don't know. Well, what do you think happened? Oh, hello. Did you? Okay, I was like, whoo! Um, I think for a second, what I had. So this will matter on where the placement is, and it seems to be fine. Because uh, the gaps that he's leaving, he's actually able to cartwheel over those gaps. So he's not going to have to do the, you know, what you kind of are supposed to do yeah. casually. Like we said, uh, shimmy across the wall. There's going to be one guard here. Who's that? This thing slays me. Like, <laughs> you see the box? A single punch buffer. So that way he walks by us. They see the box and they're like, oh, we got we to call for backup. Oof. He's, He's going to be joining us, but not really. He's just going to disappear into the void. All right. No ciphers to deal with here. And 
going into the short E parcel room here, going to be going into the box again. Kind of lower our uh, height here so that way they can't see us. He's going to see us, but we're going to be out by the time he falls. Now going into uh, strut D. And that guy, for whatever reason, he's on the bottom now. I don't know why he, he uh, changed position, but now he's on the bottom, so I don't have to worry about him. There's going to be one more guy to deal with. And then we have our first of uh, two sniping sections. He's coming with us, too. Into the Shadow Realm, he Into goes. the Shadow Realm, yes. <laughs> All right, so we got a PSG-1 to actually do the section, but I'm only gonna be using the uh, PSG-1 twice. I'm gonna try and do everything with the SOCOM. And it can't be done, but not exactly the easiest thing. Especially for some of these really yeah, far ones. Yeah, there's some really far ones here. And sorry, birds. Come on. Come oh, on. oh, no. Oh, there no. we go, okay. I'm, I'm trying not to kill as many. I'm, I'm not trying to kill birds, but I them out the way. Oh. Okay, got one behind the flag. Yeah, one behind the flag. There we go. Nice. And then there's one. There's two on the side. Oh, okay. In lower colors, there's only one, but on European stream, they have two. Also, I wouldn't worry about the bird. People wanted to kill the animals anyway. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> that made me... Right. You're not wrong. <laughs> all right, so we use all the bombs, or sorry, all the sensors. We shot all of them. Now starts the uh, Harrier fight, which is probably the most random boss in the game, and it is the probably most frustrating. And the faster that you do the fight, the more random it gets, which is kind of weird. Hmm. Doing a fight slower actually takes away RNG. So we have the Stinger missile launcher here. I'm gonna shoot him five times. And there's the fifth time. Gonna come back at us once, we're gonna shoot him once more, and then hopefully he does not dive underwater. Because that can happen. He can swim. Oh. Maybe able to get two. No, he can't. So because he was so far to the left, we can only get one shot off. I prefer to get two, but we can only get one. Sokka is getting in the way, which the higher the difficulty, the more that that will get in the way, which is kind of miraculous. So he's going this way, which means the Kasaka has a chance to get in the way here, depending on where he is. And he's completely out of the way, which is great. During my GDQ run, here, so you go. Oh! <laughs> That's awesome. A little underneath shot here as he's passing by us. You can use the little pop out strat that we used from, um, from the Fortune fight. Nice. And. It, oh, I missed. That's going to be coming up. Machine gun missiles. Okay. Oh, there's a chance to kind of like dive under, which we would not want. And we want to try to hit the actual sides here because they do more damage. As you can see right there, it just kind of dives down. And my Singer missile taking forever to actually explode. And then there's the Harrier fight. So yeah, that fight is nice. probably the hardest fight in the game or close to it. So I have to hold over to the Shell 2 core. Has to save again, but I'm gonna decline, of course. And coming up, we're gonna be using the Chaff Grenade, our last Chaff Grenade for this section here. And equipping the uh, BDU, because with this BDU, there are gonna be two guys actually coming over to like investigate, because like, you know, there are explosions and everything. And with the BDU on, they won't be able to see us. I just want to say, casually, this area, is annoying. Oh yes, this area is quite annoying casually. Like you can either do what he's doing and cartwheeling, or you do this. But uh, cartwheeling is definitely the way to go. Or, duh. All right, and you can cartwheel onto the ladder for whatever reason. He fixes himself. He's he's magical. And wait till the third window pane here. Cartwheel once and knock on the wall. Mm -hmm. Then chipping across here, 
Changing weapons actually makes you shimmy faster. And then he has a longer animation here, so I have to not do it as fast. The famous guy here. <laughs> uh, sw uh, switching weapons back and forth is like a strat in Metal Gear Solid as well, or, or in Twin Snakes. Yes. As well to uh, silence your footsteps. I think it also works in MGS1. I, mean, I can't remember. Mm. I'm not pretty sure it does. Using the last shaft grenade here for the Cyphers here. Make our way across that long jump. And a recent optimization here is that during the cutscenes, actually, we're going to be pressing and uh, holding left to actually kind of make ourselves more in line with the staircase coming up, because otherwise you have kind of to the side, so. I see right there, I kind of turned over. Whenever it goes back to actually um, gaining control, we're going to be towards the stairs this time. It's a lot better, because then we would be facing north, but now we're actually facing west, so slight optimization. So this is similar to the uh, Nikita section in MGS1. We have to go find the Nikita, which is downstairs here. And, and we actually have to swim and be a very important later on after the president will be doing a, uh, a, a um, little glitch actually skip most of the swimming section. But we have to actually go through it now just to grab one item. <laughs> and this was a result of the um, Peter Stillman explosion because he was in Shell 2 at the time. So this is all a result of that from about... I want to I want, I want to know how Raiden went down all those stairs to the very bottom without like starting to float. Yeah, like, it's weird. He broke physics. He's also a dolphin man. Yeah, yeah. yeah it seems like a fish. It's a very weird way of swimming. So here's the Nikita. I'm gonna grab it, do a little flip. There's also body armor down here, but we don't. You don't grab that, do you, Tyler? I'm the only one who does not grab it <laughs> because I just don't grab it. Um, that is very beneficial for the ray fights, and I don't think I really need it personally. But 99% of the people in the community grab the body armor there. Now that I have the Nikita, I have the uh, Singer in the secondary slot, so that way I can actually shoot the wall, because um, I need to actually set up the like good RNG with the President, and I need to do this at a kind of fast pace, otherwise he can fall over, and then I have to refire my shot. So I'm just going to go here, fire up the wall, and then he's going to say, huh? And we're just going to go over here and try to do this as fast as possible, so that way he gives us the good RNG. All right. As long as I get in there in a timely fashion, I'll be all right. Shout outs to people that play Smash Ultimate competitively. They should know what the Nikita missile is. <laughs> it should haunt their dreams. And there's the panel. Now we're going to talk to the president. He's going to tell us a bunch of information about um, Metal Gear and about other people here that are important to the story. And he's going to give us a uh, level four car, which is essential because we actually need that for the vamp fight, because there is a slight sequence break that you could do, but the issue is that this guy gives you that key to actually go through the area. So, so you can actually technically skip the president and then beat vamp, but then you'll be soft locked. So, most of the like cars are are like locked behind cutscenes, so it makes it very hard for us to like try and like sequence break. We can only do very small sequence breaks of like fights and like small sections. We can't just do big large skips. Did he just go to sleep? Is he okay? Uh, I think I'll be asleep for a while. Okay. Long sleep. That's fine. Needs a good rest. It's had a long day. <laughs> I took these photos. We did not take that photo, by the way. That's a lie. You guys saw that, right? Uh, yes. No. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a lot of cutscenes and codecs here. And on our way to fight Vamp. And for Vamp, we're going to need two weapons. going to need... Singer, the M9 here, so I'm going to set that up right now. And we're going to be doing a uh, little glitch, actually skip most of the swimming section, saves about 20 seconds or so, depending on um, how fast I actually do it. it. Saves like roughly 15 to 25 seconds, just guesstimating from my recent research that I did on it about a week ago. So the main point, or like the main um, technique here is that I'll be swimming towards the small little corner here and I'll slowly start to rise up until I'm above the ceiling, and then I can just swim through and just go straight to the door. 
but it involves us mashing left and circle, so it's not the easiest thing to do, and you can slip and slide, and you have to have a certain speed, and kind of low here, it should be fine. Once we reach almost the ceiling, then we can use the last of this to leverage us up, and we're through. Nice. And the camera's gonna break for a little bit, but it'll readjust itself here in a second once I... Whoa. All right. There you go. There we go. Nice. And that is the swim skip. That's cool. I've never seen that before. Now for the vamp fight. This one is very hard casually. Probably like the most annoying fight casually. Very so much so. But he is very achievable in the speed run. Uh, we're gonna... Tyler's gonna set up the infinite combo right here. Looking in first-person view, so that way he actually um, spawns in closer to us. Once he starts walking forward... Hey, 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 hey. Bam, stop pressing heavy. It's too much startup. You gotta do light. You gotta do, you gotta mash jab. So once his health gets to the A, Hey, hey, hey! Uh, so if we finish it with the kick, it would have been a little bit faster, but I did a little bit too much punches, but that is Vamp, which he is very scary because one of those flashes does kill you. Yep. So be very careful with that. Now I'm going to be swimming t uh, towards Autocon's sister, which is whenever the game starts to slow down a bit because you know, we've been... <laughs> That's the truth. Yeah, it slows down quite a lot, and then she's, she's all part of one of the seven-minute auto-scroller section that we have here, but... We would begin the body armor here on this hallway at the very end, but we're just going to skip it and just ignore it. During the long little uh, segment that we're going to have with Otacon's sister in a little bit, uh, do we get to hear the conversation with Johnny? Um, I think we have time, okay. maybe. Maybe? No. Mm, I'm look uh, I think we have time. We, it's up yeah, to you, man. This, we can probably do it. This is your run. I'm just, I'm just I scared. don't want to go too much over, like, over us because I already have a couple deaths, but I think we should be able to do it. I think it will be fine. That's on the second pillar. That's yeah, up to you, man. Don't have to do it if you don't want to. I will do it. A lot of conversations here about Y2K and her, her um, uh, being involved with the project itself and all that. So uh, So Emma can't swim. So yeah, tranquilizer's in her leg. So yeah, we have to actually swim for her. She has to grab onto our back. And she also can't walk because of the tranquilizer. So we actually have to hold her hands. But not right here. We can actually just drop her off there and she'll be fine. But the other sections, we will have to actually hold her hand for the majority of the part. All right. Some more Kodak calls. I talked for the first time in years because they were separated for quite a while. I have to hold her hand. As you can see, movement is very slow doing this, so some of these sections are going to be quite sluggish. Shoutouts to Silent Hill 4, the escort mission in the game. <laughs> yeah, both this, along with Metal Gear Solid 3, both have escort missions, but the one from Metal Gear Solid 3 is at the very yeah. end, and it's not as lengthy as this one. This one nope. is quite lengthy. <laughs> this, this, one, this one's painful. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. Uh, Y2K, and then that bird is actually hers, the one that was in the Shell 1 core, which we didn't actually get to hear, unfortunately. What's the, what's the bird's name again? Uh, I can't remember the I forget the, bird's the name. name. Does it have a name? I don't know. I thought it had a name. I could be wrong. So right here, the last weapon that we're going to be getting is PSG-1T. Well, sorry, second to last weapon. That's going to be used for the sniping section coming up. It's the Tranquilizer Sniper Rifle. Yep. Very essential. The Mosin Nagant. Going past those two mines. Now, she will start to lose some health, but it's okay, because just want to get by here as fast as possible, because she has a significantly lower um, health bar along with the OT gauge, but as long as she doesn't go below the letter A, we're A-okay. That's not what you did there. Oh, she was... She couldn't breathe. She'll be all right. Riding could breathe underwater because he's a dolphin man. And I can't. A lot of bugs here, and she hates bugs, so we're gonna help her out a little bit. Just gonna <laughs> gently grab her and just. Um. <laughs> you can use the coolant spray on them, right? 
on the bugs? Yeah, you can, but, but I mean, it's a bit faster. It's okay. A bit, it's a bit faster. I, just, I, I don't think I've ever done it that I'm just The way that you just did it, I don't think I've ever done it that way. I don't speedrun this game. I, I casually play this game. All right, so right here we're going to be just taking a bit of a longer path because there is going to be some guards posted here, as you'll see. Right here's going to be one heading up north. These guards are awful. Yeah, they're doing a very good job. I and mean, there's one right to the left of us, but we're going to be passing him by the time he's going to be looking over here. And one more, but we're not going to go in that way, so it doesn't really matter. Just going to hold her hand, and we have three more guards to take care of. Now, you can actually... Um, there's a slight optimization with um, grabbing her hand. If you grab it at like max range, you can save a second because right next to top, just completely, as you can see right there. But if you grab it at a certain angle, you can actually just not have that happen and it's much faster. It saves about a second, but not very many chances to do that, unfortunately. So now the KL Bridge have to take her all the way to the oil fence, which thankfully the uh, bad guys here set up a lot of ramps for whatever reason. I guess because they sent guards in here for once, so now there's a lot of ramps for us to just walk on by because you, because you know, then we have to go across them. It's going to be a couple ciphers and one guard at the very top of the roof, so we're just going to throw the chaff grenade and let it do its course. I'm going to try to call in for backup, but radar and everything is jammed. Now, I have to be kind of quick through here because otherwise this guy's going to see us. Once you get a phone ring. And okay, so max range, he'll just run away. And that small menu that I did was for the M9 coming up, going for the next two guards here. And cannot get past this door, but she has card five, because I don't. So that is the last card for the game, essentially. And after this, we're going to be going to the um, final section of the game. <clears throat> and got two guards here. Oh, hitbox for his head is very strange. Uh, okay, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you saw that the back of his head turned into the back of his neck for whatever reason. <laughs> like, and yeah, that guy has a very strange hitbox for his head specifically, and that can happen sometimes, but it's all good. All right. And down the hatch we go, and now begins the seven minute auto scroller. There is stuff to do, but I mean, you have to like wait for her to just yeah. run the course, so I mean, it's essentially like an auto scroller, but. There is stuff to do. Like we said earlier, this is a little linking section of just a lot of boring, nothing super high level. But we do get to use the uh, thermal goggles. Yes. That's pretty cool. So Emma's going to go really far away for us. She's, she's helping us out. But we got to make sure she gets over to the other uh, section safe. So we got to destroy these claymores. There's also going to be ciphers, uh, enemies. enemies that we have to take out. Now, she did fall over, which, which loses eight seconds, and she's expected to fall over, but you really don't want her to fall over. I'm going to try and... Uh. I have faith in you. Thank you. You did that. I'm speedrunning <laughs> right now. That was That one's the hardest one to get. All right, we got all of them. Nice. Uh, uh da, da, that one. Okay. Oh, nice shot. Ooh, that was clean. So now we're going to wait for the guards to patrol around. There's going to be three guards, one at the top left, then bottom right, bottom left. So we're just going to wait for them now. And the sad thing is that, like, once you get Emma, the best track in the game for me starts playing. Like, this track is amazing. I love it. But it's during, like, the most boring section. Making sure, yep, so we have no more claymores. Now we said we're about ciphers and enemies. And Snake will help us, and on the Lord of Culties, he'll call you around, like, right here. On this one, he calls you right here whenever you're basically almost done with it, because he's just really slow and he does not help out too much. Right. right, you want to go, you want to stretch your legs? You want to go jog around the venue real quick? <laughs> nah. No, okay. Actually, I have to take out one more guard. So there's going to be three guards per per um, column here, and then one after she actually goes around. 
once they're going around, it's going to have another one come up here. It's only use the uh, Pentaz 4. Oh, there he goes. We'll try to use the uh, Pentaz as little as uh, possible. Want to have just one left over for the Vamp 2 fight coming up. Yep, Vamp is not done yet. It's not over yet. He's not actually done until 4. <laughs> he refuses to just... Yeah, he comes back. He comes back. Always comes back. Yeah, not much to do here. Um, you can shoot the birds here, and if you shoot, I, I believe, six or more, then Rose will call you and be very angry with you, but <laughs> I already killed enough birds at the uh, at the first sniping section, so I'm just gonna let them be. Oh, hey, uh, it's Cypher. And Goodbye, call. Cypher. Goodbye. You'll be missed. The song is jamming. It is. It's, it's ah, a very the song relaxing is song. So now I was waiting for the guards here to show up. Should be showing up any second now. I see we are shaking violently and we need to actually equip the uh, Pentasmin and then use it in order to actually stop shaking for a bit. Steady the aim. Yes. All right, so we're going to have a couple more ciphers and then one more guard and then we are going to be getting ready for Vamp 2. Now, luckily, this will all pay off later on because the next section coming up is very high action and is very exciting, both for me playing and both for um, spectators. There's just a lot of stuff going on, so this is going to be all worth it. This is kind of just like preface and just kind of building you up to it. Although there's there's a lot of momentum, then we kind of chill for a little bit, and then it's all back full force. Yeah, so this is this is this is the calm before the storm. Yeah, exactly. The, exactly. All, the, all the late game stuff is intense. Very long and um, a lot of chances to actually die, but I feel confident. Feel good about it. A couple more ciphers to go. Should be one over here. There was one there. Wow, I'm surprised I got that myself. Should be one coming over, flying over here. Oh wait, can I still do it now? Freeze! Okay, I almost forgot about it. I almost forgot. What are you doing here? It's not my choice, thank you very much. Oh. You're not gonna shoot me. No. Why not? Stay no, why not? Good-looking women when you're fighting. Otherwise, you'll get hit with diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> One of the few things I learned from Shadow Moses. What are you talking about? Ancient history. Don't worry about it. Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about, but does this mean you're letting me go? Well, you could have found a nicer way to say that, but sure. Better hurry. Thanks. Don't mention it. Just run like hell. Oh, no, my stomach. Not again. This place is about to sink. <laughs> Just get out fast, okay? Oh. Wait. What? What's your name? Don't have one. Huh? Okay, fine. It's Johnny. Oh, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> hey, if we run into each other again. Oh. <laughs> what a weird guy. Oh, that's so awesome. Good old, good old Johnny. Now, this guy is still patrolling around, which is kind of crazy because, like, he was going around, so, like, he should have been able to see them. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting little tidbit there. It should be okay. It's going to be one more type to care of, I believe. It should be one coming across this pillar here. And Snake is finally showing up to help us. It's like, hey, man, need help with any of the ciphers? I got you. But we already took care of everything for him, so he's a little late. He's also right there, you can kind of see him. Hello. Should be one more, I believe. Phew. Good to see that the sun is actually hot on the thermal guard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very hot. In case you weren't aware of that already. All right. Can't let Snake do anything. Emptying the uh, PSG-1T here for slightly faster fight because we, um, we're going to be starting right about here, but the ammo is going to be on the far left side. So we're going to actually just, just run straight to the ammo at first. Making sure, okay, no more claymores. I had to make sure. Uh, isn't it the part everybody enjoys so much casually? This part? This part? Yeah, uh, this part. Oh, yes. <laughs> casually and speedrunners alike, this is the greatest part ever. Seven minutes of... Just walking around. Just sitting here. But hey, now I have a fight. That's not going to last very long. Fight. 
So he is holding her hostage, and we have to shoot him in the leg. We could go for the head, which does more damage, but then he would have some iframes. But with this... Ba Vamp, the shimmy ain't working, man. Stop yeah. moving her. <laughs> shimmy don't work. You got to mix it up. Now, she did get stabbed, unfortunately, so we have to rush her to Shell One Core to try and uh, treat her, because she has to put a uh, virus in the system. That's the main point of her being part of this whole story, is putting a virus to try and like stop everything, because like she kind of um, helped make it all. It's putting the virus in arsenal gear, yes. right? Oh, yeah. Specifically into, into um, GW. That's right, that's yes. right. Which is like the main mm -hmm. core program. That's right. Uh, da, 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 that one. <laughs> Off by one. Be one more guard to deal with. Shout out to Zoe again. And gonna use a Chaffernay here for the EF bridge. Wait. Get away. Just like Very that. easy. Yeah. yeah. Pretty straightforward. And there's going to be a bunch of uh, sea lice scattered throughout Shell 1 Core for whatever reason. Spooky. Lots of those. Spooky. But only in that one little section. Then they're all gone. <laughs> this is that one little corner of the hallway. So now we are going to go to Snake, and it is um, revealed that the Mysterious Ninja turned out to be Olga the entire time. And we are currently being taken in and kind of being taken um, as a hostage, just to just, like, try and like, get into Arsenal gear itself, so. But what about Emma? Rest in peace. <laughs> Rest in peace. I have to save one more time, even though we're knocked out, which doesn't make no much sense. But we're not going to save, of course. Saving. Psh. And now you actually get to, you know, see Ocelot with Solidus, and you get to hear Ocelot say, like, Four words the entire run because he doesn't say much. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> Unless you watch some of the cutscenes, of course. Jack the Ripper. So this is the uh, torture. You know this fellow. Segment. The first torture section. Yeah. For this one, me, you don't have to do you? anything, and you'll you be fine. Yeah. Next one, you do, but for this one, you don't have to. So we're just gonna just chill. High concentration of CO2 gauge will start class. to go to zero, have but then the life won't do anything. Too? Oh, oh, oh. Oh no! Oh no! Uh, uh, uh. And fish and mail. <laughs> so we are completely naked, and we have to cover our uh, selves up, of, of course, because it's be very improper. And we have to go and uh, find Snake, who is actually two rooms further ahead. And we have to do this uh, without any weapons at all. So we have to just kind of sneak by and just make with nothing. You can find cold medicine oh, here God. along you with can't keep this a up. box, They're but there's not too you. much that Please you can do without your I'll stuff. See you in a little while. Brace yourself. Ooh. Ow. It's a strong punch. So that punch, is, that is the same as one bullet damage. And that's for, for like whatever difficulty, so that hurts quite a lot. Call Rose here. She would normally call us manually, but this is slightly faster just just doing it beforehand. So now we can do cartwheels in the buff. Yes. It's got a lot of strange tattoos as well. We. Also, the uh, Colonel is acting very strange. I'll, I'll let some of this play out just so you guys can actually hear this. Raiden, do you copy? Yep. You must continue your m mission. I've lost all my gear. I need to locate Snake. He was never factored into the simulation. Yeah, so he's starting to act really crazy, which coming to find out that um, Who's there? that like the guy isn't even real. Yeah. He is a figment of our imagination created by uh, GW itself. So, it, Some of the things he says is the, some of the most iconic mm. stuff in the Metal Gear series. Uh, I, I need scissors, 61. 61 yeah. uh, a orange thing in the sky. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of... Famous quotes from this game. This this part it, this part's actually really hilarious if you listen to Colonel talk. All right, and now we made it into the ascending colon, which is probably the weirdest section of most of this here. 
We get a mandatory codec call, and then we're going to get, I believe, five more. But the only like requirement is that we be in the northern part of this hallway here. If we're in the southern part, then it'll keep on looping calls forever and ever, and it'll be very confusing, especially for like your first time playing. Yeah. So you have to be in this northern part of the actual tube. <laughs> and also, in the top right corner, we'll be getting a uh, I think it's like stock image of a uh, Japanese model. I forget. Yes. Yeah. Yes, hey, how's it going? <laughs> And she's gonna be gone in a second. Hmm. So two more codec calls here. Doesn't one of the things Colonel says, like, he's like, hey, uh, turn off your game? Yeah. It's like, hey, turn off your game, it's over. That's reference to Melgar Solid 1. Yeah. That was in the uh, hallway before Gray Fox, and that's with the Rain of Voices. They were saying those are actually, I, I believe, Japanese train stations, right? Okay. Testing my uh, Milliger knowledge. Thank you. So now Snake has our stuff, and he is in his normal gear from the tanker. Very iconic. And he gives us a sword. Sword. So I, le I learned this today. Uh, apparently, you have to swing the sword once. If you don't, you will stay in this hallway forever. Yes, yeah, so a couple months back, I was doing a uh, fight stick challenge run where I would play this game using a, like, fight stick controller, and I didn't have anything bound to my right stick, and I was in there for, like, two minutes. I'm like, I think I need to swing the sword, and then I swing it once, and then, like, four to five seconds later, then it's over. So I'm, I was like, okay, great. So until you swing the sword, There's a the, the internal timer won't start counting down. Cause this is just supposed to be you getting used to, like, a new weapon. Now, these two fights coming up are going to be involving skips. The sun grenades are going to come into factor now, the ones that we picked up earlier. And we're going to be actually doing a glitch where we hit the, um, the um, loading zone for the next room with the door in this current room to essentially skip the fights. So it's going to be a little bit hard to do this, but we're just going to have to have some more time Sun grenades, and we want to take damage here for the second fight, and I'll explain that later on. Take the item. Take the item. This room can be very scary. Setting up all these stun grenades. Nice. Oh no. Uh, that's not good. Oh, come on. Uh, it might be over. Yeah, uh, unfortunate. So I mistimed my uh, punch punch kick there, unfortunately. Right, respond. Let's try this one more time. Right, right in. Oh, you're gonna keep trying to get it. I hope so. Now you'll get it. You'll, you're good. Right, catch. So I can take a damage here. Is preferred for the next area. Yeah. There we go. Nice. Okay, so Very we're going good. to be running behind the door, and all of a sudden we uh, do this. Now, you can do this for some other doors in the game, but the um, they have to check for your like card level, but for this one, they don't. So you'll actually softlock behind the door. Now, this fight is a little bit complex, so I'll let Sarwin explain this. Okay, so this is like a, a long gauntlet section where you're supposed to be fighting all these enemies. But uh, so we're gonna just grab a guard and just take him into this room, and we're gonna let Snake do all the fighting. Since Snake is wearing his headband, he has unlimited ammo. Uh, the only thing that can really happen here that's bad is if Snake will actually come into the room that we're in right here, and he'll just kind of screw things up. But we're just gonna sit here and keep choking this guard and uh, uh, let Snake do his job. Uh, this this fight's a little infamous. We're gonna get a little thing right here that'll pop up in a second. But, uh, casually, this can be a very challenging section, but this is a very, very, very good strat. But as long as Snake doesn't come in here, we're good. Yeah. And I did not get the first Tengu, so we should be fine, though. No. Yeah. It was a little bit... Oh. Uh, oh, that guy died. Oh, uh, I mailed. Oh, guy. No. no. You must quit game. He will take some damage, but while he has the M4, he'll be fine. Yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> Just keep going. He's putting in work. Alright, so he'll fall over and get knocked out. 
to do everything correctly, yeah. we'll be able to skip the fight. They'll start to go down on the alert. Yep, there we go. Very good. Nice. And the fight just ends. So for whatever reason, whenever one of the um, soldiers stays for that long period of time, the game is very the confused and ends the fight for whatever reason. All right. This fight is a little ridiculous. Um, we're about to fight a bunch of Metal Gear Rays. Um, and when I mean a lot, I mean a lot. Since we are on playing on European Extreme, we have to kill 20. All right, yes, 20 of these things. Uh, it does decrease uh, when you're playing on easier difficulties, but um, Tyler's going to have a setup here where it's I don't know like how you would explain it. Basically, they essentially are lined up to die. <laughs> to die. Yes. Yeah, so and if he, if he keeps his rhythm, he keeps his pattern, it's going to be super simple, but... Uh, keeping but this up for a while is pretty I'm tough. To yeah, so the longer that the fight goes on, puppets. the trickster timing goes, and if I do fall out of the loop, I have to kind of go off the rails and kind of improv, which is yeah. something that I'm kind of used to because this whole Solid strat is, is uh, fairly new, Your even to me. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we're going to try and do this fight as clean as possible, but it does go off the rails, which will be very entertaining and very stressful for me, so that'll come for a very good experience. As bait. So, As you can see here, we can just go to the menu and he'll still talk no matter what, so he's messing around here. Come. Every day was absolute. This fight will be about six minutes long or so. Yeah. Just imagine, like, in metal, other Metal Gear games, you fight, like, in Metal Gear Solid, you fight Metal Gear Rex, you fight one. He's about to fight 20 Metal Gears. So these are the Metal Gear Rays. Um, they will uh, take... Uh, uh, damage more damage uh, when their mouth is open. So what he's going to do, he's actually going to shoot him in the leg, which will force their mouth open. And just he's going to keep the pattern. He's going to keep going how he's going right now. He's going to go middle. He's going to go right. He's going to go left. And uh, soon enough, that will be changing. Yeah, it, it, it will change. Here. It will change. We'll start jumping on stage, and it starts to get more complicated. Um, the Metal Gear, the, the Rays just don't sit there. They are going to right there. They are now going to start jumping. Yeah, you don't want to get hit by that. That's that thing hurts. Delay this one here because he's coming up early. This is yeah. random, so it's gonna delay that shot a little bit. And then he's gonna jump on stage. Yep. Again, we're gonna do as much open mouth as we can. It's preferred. Now, with the lag on the PS3, it makes this fight a bit harder. On the PC, this this fight is much faster pace, and this strat is, in particular, a lot easier on PC. But on PS3, there's a lot of lag, as you can see, whenever you actually fire it from the singers. There's that smoke trail, and then there's the blur effect. Right. That's unfortunate. Please Just hit. kidding. Nice. Just good, kidding. good save, good save. Yeah, hitting the sh when, when the rays are sideways, getting the shot to the mouth is, can be kind of annoying. Like the, the uh, stinger missiles do lock on, but that doesn't mean they're always going to hit, especially if you shoot it at a really funky angle. So this is strange, to say the least. So we're already out of the loop, but hey, this is going to be fun. So now my main objective is just to keep on doing this as much as I can, and maybe I can tumble back into the loop, right. which is possible. But yeah, this is kind of gonna work, but he's at a very bad position here, so I'm gonna have to. Oh, okay. <laughs> They'll sometimes do that. They'll okay. sometimes just fake you out. So this is this is pretty much juggling for three minutes oh. or, or six minutes. Oh, you're dead. Okay, I didn't know you were dead. Oh, okay. Hello. Hello, friend. <laughs> Uh, focus on this one on stage here. I hit him once while his mouth's open. Did not get it. The other guy was in the way. Particularly, you just kind of want to have like one on the stage, right? Not you don't have two. Yeah, you yeah. want one on the stage, and you don't want them far away like that one over there, which right. got a lucky headshot there. Should be coming on stage next. Yep. Nice. So the camera will pan towards the one coming on stage next, and the one with the lowest health at a certain point will be on stage. That does kill me on this difficulty without body armor, so I have to be extra careful. See, this is the part where Tyler would be using body armor. 
but he, he it's I like to skip it. I don't he he doesn't need it. All right, a lot of lag, but hey, we got that one, and hey, now we are kind of back on the loop yep. of sorts. So now we're just gonna hit this one once, hit this guy, and then hit the one on stage again. So yeah, now we're kind of back in a yep. similar loop. Did that one hit? Yes. Okay, I, I, I guess I missed it. Okay, try to get that one as early as possible so that I have enough time to hit this guy. They just keep lining up to die. I think they learn. Uh. Oh, hello. I think that went to the face. Oh. Fortunately, he didn't kill this guy fast enough. Right, so... Uh, get away. Okay. So that one right there, he opened his mouth up and I was able to get a free shot in. You typically only do it from the knee, but whenever they actually come on the stage, they actually do that once. So I get a chance to get some free damage in. I see right here. It is a bit trickier and the timing is specific, so. All right, not doing too bad. Worst thing, of course, is going to be death here, which I think we're doing all right because we are getting towards the end. Yeah, Once the, the uh, letter E, that is pretty much the end. Oh, all right. So whenever he sort of opens his mouth, I kind of block my missile path. Don't fire a missile, please. OK, so they can fire missiles if they stare at you like that. It's a small chance to happen, and you don't really want that. All right, if I can get this one quickly enough, and I think I can. And then it kills me because it feels. I feels like you shoot it and it never hits, but then it does. Oh, okay. So shoot you again. Ooh. Yeah, sometimes the uh, lock on can be kind of weird in this game. Hello, right. friend. Hello, friend. <laughs> a little bit too far to the left. Uh, a little too late. So we are working on the fight. So the rest of this, one more open mouth shot, and we are done. Oh, just kidding. Oh, I am. I can't. Okay, we're almost done. It's fine. There we go. Okay, now we're actually done. Now we're actually done. Awesome. So pretty much at any point, if he got hit, he would have died. Anything kills me besides them knocking me over. That one just doesn't do any damage. It just can. It just kind of knocks me over, but stomping on me, the lasers, the Jack. missiles, the machine guns, uh, anything kills me. GW, so. The arsenal AI is so this is Solidus, this Mr. President. You. Yeah, this is the torture sequence now for PS2 version. This was much longer in this game. They nerfed it quite a bit. It's only 15 seconds, and they give you a much larger health bar, which then carries on into the Solidus fight itself. It's only lasts about 15 seconds compared to the PS2's 60 seconds. His hand's going so fast, you have no idea right now. It's insane. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to lie, I thought that was you breathing. <laughs> it's I'm not, not working that hard. Not, <sighs> yeah, not yet. So just as a heads up, um, time will uh, stop once this boss is defeated. So from the last of the boss, that will be whenever we have time. And we are going to try and loop him. And for the last yes. boss of the game, he is fairly simple. Yes. And because of the um, bigger health bar, it's even made easier. For the older games, it's much harder because you can't take many hits. On this one, it's kind of like jokingly easy. I have a couple of codec calls, which you guys need to listen to this. Great um, codec conversations. A lot of very interesting conversations going on. A lot. Uh, stuff about um, postmodernism, uh, memetics, and all that stuff, and a lot of this kind of translates into a lot of things today, and it's it really does. Yeah, it's like what, fifth? No, seventeen years later? I think. Years later? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's a uh, Metal Gear. Just the story in general is so well written. It's one of the best one of the best like storytelling video game experiences you can ever uh, have. 
All right, so here we have Solidus. It's going to be a quote-unquote sword fight, but we're not going to actually be using the sword because uh, punches do the same amount of damage, and they're faster. Destroyed. We're going to use sword a little bit, though. Oh, hello. He has two swords. Terrible camera angles, by the way. I think like, so Solid games. Solidus needs to look up his frame data. He keeps pressing buttons when he knows he shouldn't be. And his frame traps are crazy. Yeah, frame trapping him. That jab's like plus five on block. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. What's uh, kind of funny is uh, even in uh, Metal Gear Solid 1, when you fight Liquid, there's a, there's the same thing. You can keep him in a, an infinite combo until he dies. So it's it's really cool that you get so, kind of some of the same like ideas and strategies in multiple uh, games across uh, the series. Yeah, mostly the uh, final Metal Gear bosses, they're not very good at fighting. That's the longest one you can do. He has a couple of attacks. That was like minus 12. <laughs> So using the sword here to kind of cancel. Oh, whoops. All right, that's fine. Take this. Put you. yet again. It's like horror game. Oh man, don't you. <laughs> Let's not get into that. All right, so time will be coming up here shortly. So be Ooh, ready. that pulse stand for. All right, and that's time. Hey, 10 minutes underestimated. Great. It's a lot better than I thought it would have been. So yeah, um, thank you so much for uh, No Reset for um, letting me showcase this Amazing game. You Thank you for uh, um, Dreamer Dallas for the venue. Of Such thanks to uh, Starwin from the couch. I also have a couple of friends in the audience. I have I my friend now. Josh. And is the day uh, guys, I hey, what's you. up, man? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it. so um, that is Metal Gear Solid 2. Um, for this game, I run it pretty often, so feel free to give me a follow on Tyler2022 at uh, twitch.tv. And we have a um, Discord server for all the Metal Gear games. There's a pretty big community yeah. for just about any game that you can find. Even recently, Metal Gear Acid. Yes, no, Metal Gear Acid is actually yes. it's, it's an up-and-coming game. What? Yes, it is crazy. So join the Discord, come to my stream, hang out, and I'll be running this game for quite a bit. I actually just got um, world record in about a week ago, so I'm still doing optimizations for this game, still trying to run it as fast as I can. So I appreciate you guys all for watching me and hope you enjoy the next run to teach that to our children.